Good, good evening, good evening, good evening, everybody. God bless you all on this wonderful Tuesday evening. This is the day the Lord has made, and I know you already been rejoicing. You already been glad in it all day. Amen. I know you had a blessed day. Well, I pray that you had a best blessed day. I pray you had a productive day. I pray you had a day that God has just showed himself and God has just proven himself again. Amen. Over and over to you. I pray that you had a day, that maybe you have grown in your faith on today. But God bless you. Thank you that you are, um, if you have joined us on this beautiful 65, 66 kind of afternoon in Detroit, for those of us that's in Detroit, Michigan, amen, very beautiful day. Thank you that you have joined me on this wonderful evening. Amen, here's what you can do. Amen, take your iPad, take your phone, go sit on the porch, get you some watermelon or some apple and some oranges, some good fruit, amen, or some potato chips. <laughs> go sit on the porch and enjoy the word just for the next 45 minutes with me on, amen, this evening. Again, thank you, wherever you're viewing me from on tonight. I don't take it for granted just because we're virtual. I don't take it for granted that you have taken time out your day to join me as we walk through the word of the Lord on together. For you all that's maybe just flipping through social media, amen, happen to find me, flipping through YouTube, my name is Spencer T. Ellis, amen, right there at the bottom of your screen, uh, and I am pastor of Citadel of Praise Church here in Detroit, Michigan, and we are a church where we love God and we love people, and we are just excited about what God is even doing right now, even in our midst. Real quickly, before I jump into the lesson, y'all know I like to say a quick couple hellos. I got a lot of people who like it, some, a lot of people who don't like it, but I don't know what to say. Just kind of breaking the ice before we jump. I'm not going to do a lot. I know I say that all the time, right? And then I'm doing, end up doing a lot, but God bless you. Uh, Sister Lydia, God bless you, Sister Lydia. Thank you for joining us, Sister Pat. Thomas, God bless you on tonight, Sister Pat, Sister Yvonne. God bless you. Thank you for joining. Um... Sister Stacy, I think that's there, Stacy. All right, God bless you, Sister Stacy. Thank you for joining me. Amen. On tonight, we got the flight attendant. Amen. American, American or United Airlines. Sister Tamika, Tamika, God bless you. I guess, Amen. I don't know if y'all flying or not, or or whatever you're doing. Amen. With the airlines, but we pray your strength in the Lord. Phyllis Green, God bless you, Sister Phyllis. Amen. God bless you, Sister Marie Mosley Lewis. 
So, so Miss Maria, Sister Netta Dean King, God bless you. Love you all tonight. Deacon Daryl, he said, what's up, my Citadel family? God bless you. And Crystal, God bless Sister Crystal. Oh, Crystal said we are watching. Oh, 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 whoa, whoa. I'm sorry, I just had my own reaction there. Hey, Amen. We are watching. I'm in the ER, but I don't want to miss the word. Sister Crystal, God bless you. She said, we are watching. I pray that whatever's going on, whether you're in ER or with somebody that you took the ER, we're, we're, we put it in the hands of the Lord on tonight. And thank you that you're watching us even in ER and you love the word that much. I'm honored, amen, that you would be viewing us and we're praying for whatever situation we put in the hands of the Lord because there's nothing too hard for God. God bless you, Sister Cynthia. Thank you for joining, Brother Curtis. What's up, my bro good friend and brother, man, Curtis Bowley. Amen, we go way back. And uh, Cynthia Small, God bless you tonight. Amen. And uh, Antoinette Hall, God bless you, Antoinette. And John, what's up, John Mitchell? God bless you on the night, man. And um, Divine, Detta, Vanita Anderson. All right, we'll call you v VA. Amen. Hey, God bless you, this is the VA. Amen. Hey, Renetta Matthews, glad to be in the number one more time. I know that's right. Sister Kenya, God bless you on tonight. Hey, Amen. Thank you for joining us. Sister Funderburg, God bless you. Hey, Amen. Thank you on tonight. Professor Jan Duncan, God bless you. Professor Jan Duncan and Charmin. Charmaine, Charmin, one of those. God bless you. Carol Hill, God bless you on tonight. Amen. God bless you, Sister Courtney. I know I'm supposed to call you about some things, some ministry things um, to go over with you. And I promise you, Courtney, I'm going to get with you this week. Amen. Call me and let me know. At the, call me at the church or something. Let me know the best time to call you or email me. Let me know the best time to reach you so we can, amen, continue the Lord's business here in our ministry. But thank you. Keep day. What's up, little brother, all the way in Dallas? What's the weather like down in Dallas, Texas? Amen. Sister Lynette, God bless you, Sister Lynette. And Mashawn. And who else we got? My big bro, Chicago, Illinois. Alton Brown. Oh, no, he's not in Chicago no more. Alton is here in Detroit. God bless you, Alton. And Wendy is on the line tonight. God bless you, Wendy. And Brenda Evans, God bless you. And the Psalm, Psalmstress extraordinaire, Dan Patterson. And grandma, I'm going to stop calling her grandma. She's too young to be grandma. Marilyn is, what they call you, Marilyn? What, what's your kids? What they call you? Um, Nay, Not Nay Nay. What's they, how come I, oh man, it's amazing. I, I can be fresh all day, get online and all of a sudden. Uh, what, what's your grandbaby call you, Marilyn? But anyway, um, to the Valerie, God bless you on tonight. And Lakeisha Parsons, God bless you, Lakeisha. And Marilyn Miller, she said, hello, church family. Amen. Deb Jemison, Eastside. What's up, Sister Deb? God bless you. Athena Pfizer. So, Athena, thank you. I think you gave us something. I think that was your handwriting. And thank you. I did get that. Elder Ann, we're praying for you, Elder Ann. I was out of town last week. I did get the message, amen, that you had some surgery. Matter of fact, your name, I think, is on our prayer list. And um, I'll call it again. But again, we're praying for you. And we love you and your leadership here at our church. Our church would not be the same without you. And we definitely pray that you're getting well and God is giving you strength. Lamisha, what's up, Sister Lamisha? God bless you on the day. And Woody, the gristles are watching. The scars are real. Oh, man. Somebody remind us of Sunday. Amen. The scars are real. Yes, they are. Joyce Lofton, God bless you, Sister Joyce. And Sean Parker. All right. And everybody. <laughs> Charlene Gaddis. Amen. And um, all right, I know I, all right, we'll do, let me, I see some names here, host, and I'll just throw them out real quick, man. And Gwen Clemens and George Miles and um, Dan said he felt lost last week. I did, I, I was actually, for those that was, forgive me for last week, I was ready to go. I was online, ready to go. And it just kept dropping even before we get, we went live. And it just kept, man, it was acting weird because I was out of town and the internet it was just crazy. So we couldn't go live at the last minute while we were testing some stuff. So stuff happens. As what I always say, you love technology when it works and we hate it when it don't work. That's the only thing about technology. All right. George Mount. Oh, just keep saying it's 85 down in the DFW. About to go make a corned beef sound. They sell corned beef in Texas. I thought corned beef was a Detroit, Michigan thing, but I, that's cool. Learn something every day. So right. God bless you. Tanisha, Dwayne. And Tish is on here, and Elder Gaines is on here, um, and 
Ferrari. Did I pronounce that right? Ferrari is on here, and Miss Hawkins is on here, and everybody's on here today, y'all. Thank y'all. Do me a favor real quick, and thank y'all for joining. I see all y'all names and stuff. Y'all coming in. Oh, yeah. All right. Miranda said they call it G. Grandma or G. GG. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Amen. There you go. Thank y'all. All right. God bless y'all tonight. Thank everybody for coming. I see your names, y'all. I don't want to bore people and I don't want to lose my audience for people who don't like this because otherwise they're going to start hanging up and all that stuff. So, and what's up, Lawrence? And we're going to jump in tonight. Let's pray on tonight and we're going to get started. We're going to talk about, and, and it's going to take me a minute. No, I shouldn't take, say take me a minute, but just want to do it right. Amen. As you see on your screen, we're going to talk about, do I need to quit? We're going to talk about when do you need to quit something? Just hold tight. We're going to get there. Amen. We're praying for Ken Allen, praying for the Christmases, Deacon Sam and Regina, and the loss of his two aunts. He's bearing two of his aunts. Amen. Uh, 196 years old and one 101. I guess both in the Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia area. So we're praying for Deacon Christmas. We're praying for Mother Pat Wallington. The viewing was today and the loss of her sister. That service is tomorrow at the Good Shepherd Missionary Baptist Church on Evergreen in Southfield. I think it's Evergreen at 8 Mile in Southfield. Family hours at 10, service time at 11. And again, we're praying for Elder Kevin Roberts, praying for Elder, Sh Elder Ann Hudson, who's on here tonight, and everybody, and the names we have, the names we don't have. Let's pray on tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we stop to say thank you. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Father, for starting us on our way. Thank you for life, health, and strength. You didn't have to do it, but you did. You are so good to us, Lord. There is none like you. We can search all over, as we often say, as the songwriter said, and we will find nobody like you. We can search to the east, to the west, to the north, to the south. We can search, God, amen. Uh, it don't matter where we search. We'll find nobody that can do us like Jesus. And Father, on today, we just ask that you would bless each individual name that we called on the day. Bless those that are sick. Bless those that are bereaved. Bless those that's in the hospital. Bless those that's in the convalescent home. Bless those who are in ICU. Bless those who are in hospice. Bless those who are in rehab. Bless those, God, that's trying to find their way. Bless those that are dealing with the flu. Bless those that are dealing with the cold. Bless those that are dealing with COVID. Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, we put everything in your hands. We look to the hills from which cometh our help. And we know that all of our help comes from the Lord. And Father, we ask that you would just be with us for the next few minutes. Even though we're virtual, even though all of us are in different places, all, even though or although all of us are in, some of us are in different cities and different states, we want to feel that one spirit. Even though we're in different rooms, different locations, but we want to feel that one spirit on tonight. Father, we thank you, God. We put everything in your hands, and we are walking by faith, and we're believing that many of the tests that we're going through, that you're going to turn them into the te testimony. We, we believe that many of the trials that we're going through, you're going to turn them and make them into triumph, and we say thank you, God, once again, to be with us and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. What's up, Lonnie? Lonnie Marsh, man, you, man, this is so good to see you. Girl, how you doing? I think you're in Arizona, Arkansas, somewhere. I don't think you're in Texas, Phoenix, something like that. But thank you, man, for stopping by and hang out with us. Thank you for joining us on tonight. And I saw some other people come in on tonight. Um, but thank y'all. I, mean, I saw Melbourne Chet come in on the night. I saw Andre Williams. But God bless y'all. Brothers, sisters, go with me just for a few minutes um, because oh, she's from Arizona, man. Thank you, Lonnie. You know I love you. I haven't seen you, and I don't know when. But, man, love you. I was just with Dave Marshall, your brother, the other day, and we was at an event. Amen. But thank you. Amen for joining and love you so much. All right, brothers and sisters, here's what I want to do. Let me jump into this because time is... Time is, is, is fleeing on us, and I want to get into this lesson on tonight. I want to talk about, do I need to quit? I want to deal with, amen, talk about when you need to quit something. Now, it's going to take me a minute to introduce this because um, I want to say this correct. I've been in the African-American church all of my life. I've been in a leadership position or in leadership roles one way or the other, something here or there, amen, mostly all of my life. And oftentimes when you ask, you know, when you talk about that subject about quitting, 
people have a variety. Many, 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 many reasons why we quit things. And oftentimes, I'm going to say this, we quit things too soon. Oftentimes, we don't know when to quit. Sometimes we quit without thinking. We quit because somebody just talked about us. We quit because somebody don't like us. We quit, especially church stuff. Can I go there? We quit church stuff because we gave a suggestion and we gave a suggestion (laughs) and they act like they didn't hear me. We quit church stuff because, I don't know, somebody didn't speak to us. We quit church church stuff because the pastor didn't call my name. We quit church stuff because the first lady didn't speak to me. We quit church stuff because um, they rejected, you know, it's a, again, the list goes on and on. And, um, but I, 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 I want to deal with some things, amen, because there is, believe it or not, in Christ and in your secular life, there may be a time to quit something. But you got to be very careful to know when that time is, because there are some times that you are not to quit something. I'm going to get there, too. There are some things of God, amen, that God is calling us to that you don't quit, amen, that you just never quit because it's a higher calling of God. But then there's some things that we have done that we didn't consult God. There are some things that we do that's not of God, that we think are of God. There are some things we do we didn't pray about. There are some things we do um, that are draining our energy. There are some things that we do that's sucking the life out of us. There are some things that we do. So I want to be careful as I introduce this lesson because more, because many times we're just looking for a reason to quit something. Y'all know, especially hey man, if, it's, if you ain't getting paid, you're volunteering, or just feel like it's not working out. A lot of times we just quit to um, quit. We, 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 are, we are quick. To quit something, or here it is, the flip side, we're quick to hold on to something while it is draining us. When I was growing up, many of y'all heard this phrase. Let me give y'all this phrase, and I know you heard it, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Quitters never win, and winners never quit. Y'all heard that? I'm going to say it again. Quitters quitters never win, and winners never quit. That's been drilled into us for years and years and years. Amen. I lived it. I practice it. Amen. Even to this day, sometimes you just don't want to quit anything. But but sometimes I have to question the validity of that phrase. You know, quitters, winners never, quitters never, quitters never win and winners never quit. Well, uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. Sometimes we have to question the validity. Amen. So on tonight and uh, maybe Concluding on next week, here's what we're going to talk about. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to just talk about quitting. And I didn't put it in the subject, but I want to deal with what we call strategic quitting. Somebody type that or somebody say it with me. Strategic, S-T-R-A-T-E-G-I-C. Strategic quitting. Because that means we just, that means it's quitting, amen, with thought. It means that um, I put, I, I, I'm quitting with thoughtful and careful consideration of what I'm doing. I'm going to say that again. Strategic quitting. That's what we're going to talk about. Strategic quitting is quitting something that we we thought out carefully and we thought out, I'm going to say thought out thoughtfully. That's probably going to go. But we really considered it. Amen. Thank you all for typing it. Strategic quitting. Not just quitting because we're lazy. Not just quitting because we don't want to do it. Strategic quitting. Now, I got to start off by saying, brothers and sisters, there are some things that we never quit. There are some things that we don't walk away from no matter how bad it's looking. Number one, let me say it like this. We never walk away from the promises of God because the promises of God are yea and amen. Somebody said, what would Jesus do? Well, hang with me. Amen. Um, um, you don't, know, because many of us give up on the promises of God and the promises of God, again, are yea and amen, which means simply mean if God said it, that God will bring it to pass. Is there, let me go spiritual on you all. Cause when God is calling you to something, amen, it's a God thing. 
It is a God calling and it's not optional. So let's just get that off the table. Let's just let, let's just put that on the shelf. God bless you, Elder Gaddis. Amen. Um, there, there's some there, there's a, there's some God when God is calling you, like when God called Moses. Y'all y'all read through the book of Exodus. Do you know that was a God calling and God spoke to him? Moses, take off your shoe. The ground you're still on holy ground. I'm going to send you back to Egypt. Tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Tell Pharaoh I'm I, you know God God gave. Moses a promise. I'm going to lead you to a land filled with milk and honey. I'm going to lead you to a land. Amen. I'm going to take you out of Egypt. And y'all read the book of Exodus. Don't have time to teach it. But do y'all know how many times Moses quit? Hold on. Forget. It. I'm sorry. Not quit. How many times Moses felt like quitting? Can y'all imagine the times that Moses was drained from leading God's people. Matter of fact, Moses is one of the only people in the Bible where him and God had a conversation where Moses said, God, amen, where, where, where God said, Moses, I need you to lead your people. And Moses said, Lord, these ain't my people. These are your people. Amen. These people are crazy. These people are stiff necked. And a lot of times it was taxing. It was draining on Moses. But hold on. It was a God calling. So we're going to take that off the table because that does not apply are y'all with me? I told y'all y'all had to give me a minute to introduce this lesson because there are some things that you know that God is calling you to do and God does not want you to get, amen, oftentimes, I mean, God does not want you to get discouraged to quit. Um, God, that there's often steps to where, to, to we get to our promised land. There's often steps to we get to that land that God has promised us that's flowing with milk and honey. So let me say this again. When God is calling you to something, brothers and sisters, we have to walk with God with unwavering faithfulness. Can I say that again? When God is calling us something, we have to walk with God, amen, and trust God and walk with God with unwavering faithfulness. I can think about something else. Who was the prophet? Amen. When he told the prophet, um, I think it was Elijah. Elijah, when there was no rain for all those years, there was no rain. God has shut out the heavens. And he said, I'm getting ready to give you some rain. He said, go look. Amen. Go out and look upon the mountain. And the Bible says he went out and looked. Didn't see nothing. Okay. Went out again. Didn't see nothing. Went out again and didn't see nothing. And God kept telling him to go back. Can y'all imagine the discouragement that he had when he said, I thought you said it was going to rain. I don't see nothing. The Bible says eventually at the seventh time he saw he saw, he saw uh, a cloud of a man's hand and God is going to bless him. Donna Michelle, she said, "Be now, we're going to get there. I'm going to give you some scriptures in a minute. So, but I want to, I, I want to encourage those because I don't want, I don't want nobody who feel like God's called you to something. Things are not working out. If God called you to start that business, it's another story. Now, if you just started a business and you want to make some extra money, then stick with me. But if God called you, God called you into a certain ministry, because again, the promises of God, I don't mean to be repetitive, but I got to drill it home. The, the, the promises of God are yea and amen. Andre said, even in the garden, Jesus wanted to quit. Oh, oh my God. Jesus, oh, come on, y'all. Y'all teaching with me tonight in the garden. Oh my God. We, we know Jesus is human. His, his weariness came out. He said, Lord, if it's possible, believe that's what he said in the garden, right, Andre? He said, if it's possible, remove this cup from me, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So brothers and sisters, you can't just take this, what you call it, con, con, blanche, amen, or do I need to quit? Because again, when God is calling you something, there will be times of discouragement with walking with God. But Thank you, Crystal. She said, being the dead horses, amen, sometimes being the dead horses is unnecessary. We're going to get there, but amen. But when it's the things of God, it's not beating the dead horse when it comes to God, because there's, it's called walking with God. It's called growing in your faith. It's called being not weary, as somebody put earlier in Galatians. Matter of fact, put that scripture up for me, since we're going to go there. Galatians 6 and 9. This definitely applies to the things of God. Galatians 6 and 9 on your screen. We're going to read it. It says, be not weary in well-doing, for at the proper time, we will weep a harvest if we do not give up. Y'all, is right there on your screen. But that's not, that's not, again, 
Can I say it like this tonight? I need y'all to use some discernment on what I'm teaching on tonight. You just can't take a stab at it. I need you to use some discernment because the Bible said, be, because y'all, can I tell y'all something? And I don't want to start, you know, going to nine years of ministry. When I was trying to buy this building that we be in, that we, that we were in, since paid off, never missed a note. Man, it came down to the last hour because I was buying a, a $2 million building and hadn't even passed the church for one year. And every bank was turning me down. Bank of America, Chase, oh, at that time I think it was J.P. Morgan, Comerica, Fifth Third, Citizens Bank. And I'm trying, and I'm promising the church we're getting ready to move. And I could have said, I could have gave up. And at the ninth hour, a small bank that now since changed the name called Detroit Commerce Bank, downtown Detroit, came through with that loan, y'all, for this building. And guess what? I, we never missed the payment. I say that to say, so again, I, I'm going to keep beating this horse because I want y'all to get it. Um, so there's some things that we have to hold on to when it comes to the thing of God. But there are times, brothers and sisters, we are holding on to things that is draining us. We're holding on to things that is sucking the living life out of us, y'all, that God necessarily called us to. It, 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 is, it may not be a God ideal. It might just be a good ideal. And then that brings me to my subject tonight on when we have to discern. Um, matter of fact, hold on. Let me give some more scriptures. Hold on. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back. I was going to say, I'm going to get to some things that might be a good ideal, that may not necessarily be a God ideal, but um, that's draining us and sucking the daylights out of us. But brothers and sisters, let me encourage you all. You all that know it, that know that is God and doors are just not opening and doors keep closing. Again, that's all part of your faith building. Amen. And walking with God. That's the thing I talked about Sunday where God don't necessarily have to explain himself, but he will reveal why you why you going through it. Again, all right, James chapter one, verse number 12. Let's go through these scriptures. Amen. For you all that, that say, oh, pastor, I can't quit. This is God. I don't want you to quit. James chapter number one, verse number 12 says, and it's on your screen, blessed is the one who preserves under trial because having stood the test of time. Oh, that's good. Some of you all, God is leading you and you got to stand the test of time. Sometimes God is asking you, how bad do you want it? Uh-oh. Anybody on here tonight, God called you to start a business and the business ain't working the first year? It's, I know you want to quit. I know you want to give up. But blessed is the man that, it, that perseveres under trial because having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those that love him. So there are some promises that you can't quit, that you cannot give up on. Let's go to James chapter five, verse number 11. They'll put it on your screen. He says, behold, as you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. Look at that, y'all. Two times we're talking about those who persevere, those who are going through the test of time. Have, you have heard of Job's perseverance. Y'all know the story of Job. Won't teach it. Go into it on tonight. And have seen what the Lord finally brought about. I like that, though. Y'all that want to encourage me, you all just walking with God and know that God is leading you, go read the book of Job. Job got what? Is it 50 something chapters, 40 something chapters? You read the book of Job. Have you heard of Job? Perseverance. How he stood the take of time? He, his, and, and how he stood the test of times? He says, the Lord is full of compassion and mercy and mercy. Let's go to Matthew 24, 13. Matthew 20. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. But he and the, the King James Version said like this. But he that endures to the end shall win, shall be saved. Brothers and sisters, let me say this. Quitting on God or quitting on God led ministry, God led. Remember, I keep saying God led because some things y'all, we ain't prayed about. We think it's God, but it's not God. So maybe that's your first prayer is want to pray, Lord, is this you? And when it's God, brothers and sisters, quitting on God is never the answer. Quitting on God, period, is never the answer. God's love, God's grace, God's forgiveness 
is always constant. So y'all, please forgive me if I don't get far tonight, but I got to get, I got to make sure you understand this because I don't want to talk nobody out their blessing. I don't want to talk nobody out their testimony and you ain't got that yet. So I, I ain't trying to treat you like you're ignorant. I'm not trying to treat you all like y'all school kids, but I got to just be for real tonight. Amen. And I want y'all to follow me. Amen. On, on, uh, so you have to know the difference between being discouraged in a God place and quitting. And that's what I don't want you to do. All right. So, which leads me to my lesson on tonight. And we'll put it back up here tonight. Amen. When do I need to quit? Because brothers and sisters, there are some things that in order to be successful, uh-oh, I'm, I'm, I'm about to flip the whole script on y'all. Man, I'm about to flip the whole script. And you are that who I'm preaching to and I'm teaching to, trust me, you will, you will get this in your spirit. There's some things that we need to quit in order to be successful. I got to let that sink in. After I just told y'all, don't quit. Don't give up. I was talking about a God thing. But there are some things we got ourselves into. I don't mean to start hollering. Hey, Amen. That we need to quit in order to be successful. Think about some companies, y'all, who never quit some things. Hey, Amen. Because the thing was no longer valid, draining them, or no longer worth it. Can I call out blockbusters? Anybody old school like me remember blockbusters? I Blockbusters, I think I read the story where blockbusters waited too long before they quit. They kept hanging on to something. And do y'all even still have VH, VHS videos? Is that what they call it? Yeah, VHS. Y'all still have VHS? Hey, Amen. They tell me block, Blockbusters went bankrupt uh, because they didn't know when to quit. Uh -oh, y'all see where I'm going now. Um, um, Kodak. Oh, man. Kodak went out of business. Oh, that's another one. Y'all remember Kodak? Kodak the made film? When last time you bought film? When the last time you took film up to CBS Rite Aid and waited three or four days and came back and picked up pictures? And I told Kodak, didn't know when to quit. And guess what? They went out of business. And we could probably name some other companies and things like, but that's just a small example of sometimes, hey man, they didn't quit, so they were no longer successful. And some of us are holding on to things, y'all, that's keeping us from being successful. Are y'all with me? Y'all got that? And that's what you call strategic quitting. Strategic quitting. Sometimes it's okay, amen, to strategically quit something. Strategic, strategic quitting is, step, is thoughtful and is thoughtfully and carefully quitting a program, ministry, or something that simply is not working. Y'all please catch that. Strategic quitting is thoughtful, is thoughtfully and carefully quitting a program, ministry, leadership, job that's simply not working, that has become stay or stale, is disproportionately sucking up resources or simply need to go. There are some things, brothers and sisters, that's draining us, sucking up resources. Some of us are putting money at the stuff that's just not working. Some of us are not are putting time and energy into something, and I'm gonna go here, y'all not gonna like this, or someone. Oh, somebody, y'all put I see y'all put some other things on here. Nakia, no, yeah, Nakia and some other stuff. Amen. But it's putting, and that's what they were doing. They're, they're putting money, resources into something that's just not working. It has become totally obsolete or have become totally stale. Catch this, y'all. Y'all, some of us, man, you know something? Here, here's what's so ironic in my experience, just my little humble experience. It's amazing because many of us will be quick. To, many of us will be quick to quit a God thing and hold on to something that's not of God that keep draining us. I've seen that. Anybody see? Man, we'll quit something in a minute. God, that didn't work. God, you told me you was coming. God, you didn't heal my son. God, you didn't heal my daughter. God, you didn't do this. God, you didn't pay my bill. And, and, and we'll quit something, in, in a, a trick of the enemy, a trick of the devil. he have us quitting on God in a minute. And we'll hold on to something in the streets or in the world or something secular, y'all, that's just draining our resources, our money. You always frustrated. You always mad. You always tired. Amen. That's when we know or that's when we have to consider 
when it's time to quit. Many of us, y'all, the reason why we don't quit, and many of us, y'all know who I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to, because I'm sure you can feel it in your spirit. Many of us have got caught. I read something. We got, we have gotten caught up in what we call the sump, S-U-N-K, sump cost bias. What do you mean, Pastor, when you say sump cost bias? That is a mental trap that we have fallen into because we have invested so much time and energy into a project or into a person, we would feel like a failure if we just nixed it. Can I say that again? Sunk cost bias. Mean that we just sunk so much money into it. We just sunk so much energy into it that we would feel like a complete failure if we just, if we just forgot about it or if we simply quit it. And brothers and sisters, in reality, Many projects, many persons or peoples, not peoples, but y'all get it, amen, need to go, need to go. How do you know? And I'm going to leave it here tonight. How do you know when something needs to go? Y'all, can I, can I go back for, for a minute? I fell into that sunk cost bias. Man, you ever just bought a car and put so much money into that car? And you're like, I ain't getting rid of this car. I put two, And the car is just worthless. Or anything else into a project at your house, a project at work, amen. Sunk cost bias, amen. And, 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 we, and, and we're going to feel like a failure if we simply quit it. And here's what's so funny. Quitting it is actually going to make you more successful. You are a failure because you keep, when you keep putting resources and time and energy and money into it. I hope y'all got that. All right. So here's, here's, so how do we know when it's time? Well, you know something. Let me hold on to that. I'm going to get to that next week. Let me give you four benefits of strategically quitting something. I'm going to give you four benefits. And some of y'all going to really catch this when, when I give it to you. All right? Four benefits of strategically quitting something. Let's roll. Number one, when you strategically quit something, it can release resources. I just told y'all, some of y'all putting too much resource. Some of y'all, they can't get no sleep. Some of y'all can't get no peace. Some of y'all can't get no rest because you keep pouring in bad resources after in, into, into muddy ground. Let me say it like that. We keep putting, we keep, we keep pouring resources into something that just ain't working. It can release resources. It can release your time. It can release your energy. It can release your money. Amen. And here's what it really does. It releases it for other projects and initiatives with greater potential. Oh, can I say that again? It releases resources, time, money. Y'all list all the resources you all want for other things, other projects, other initiatives with greater potential for spiritual, financial, organizational payoffs. What are you saying? We're wasting energy and resource into things that's not paying us off. Anybody here invest? Anybody here invest? Do you, man, one, of the, one, of the, one of the biggest crises is investing is when you keep pouring money into a company that's no longer working. When you could be taking that money and putting it in a company, in the, anybody in the stock market, mutual funds, like I am, amen. And sometimes you see the company, you're just hoping for the best. It keep dropping. It, price keep dropping. Price keep dropping. You keep buying it and you keep buying it. Amen. After a while, those resources could have gone to other companies, amen, with a greater payoff. Other mutual funds with a greater payoff. Are y'all with me? Amen. Some of us, y'all ain't going to like this. Some of us are wasting a lot of money on gambling. Because you keep waiting to hit it big online with, 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 uh, what's all the commercials I see? What's the one with Jamie Foxx on DraftKings, on FanDuel, on, uh, yeah, I'm talking about when to quit. Yeah, now I'm coming down your alley. I'm coming down your alley. We keep, oh, Bitcoin. I, well, I don't know. That could be investing. But again, somebody said, God is speaking to me. Thank you, God, for using, I just missed that. Uh huh. To bless me, other when I know not to give time. Oh, there, there you go. Really, but 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 really, y'all, it's the same thing as the stock market. You keep investing in the company, y'all. I'm on. Can, can I confess? 
Cause I, you know, my, my mother taught me how to invest when I was young. She loved investing in mutual fund. And my uncle in California, her brother, my uncle, my uncle, um, man, I forgot my uncle's name that quick. Um, mm -hmm. Anyway, taught me how to invest. And it, man, there was one company called eToys. Y'all probably never heard of it. Remember eToys? When toys was first coming out, selling online, I kept investing in eToys, eToys, and eToys. E-toys, I keep thinking it's going to come back. It's going to come back. Anyway, didn't know when it was time to get out. And sometimes that's what you call strategic planning, strategic quitting, know when it's time to get out. Um, I could tell you about some other companies, but I'll let it go. Anyway, I learned. Lost money in the stock market and all of that because I didn't know when to strategically quit. Now, likewise, it's just not for the stock market, y'all. It's in life. Some of us, y'all, again, we need to release resources. Thank you uh, for somebody that said that is so deep. I love it. Thank you, Taikis. Um, we need to release resources, y'all, that we can put into other projects, initiatives with a greater payout. Because some of us, y'all, you waiting on something that's not going to change. Y'all got it? So that's, that's what we're talking about, the benefits of strategically quitting. Let me give you another benefit. Benefit number two. Oh, this is good. It can remove the perpetual drip, D-R-I-P, of regret. It can remove the perpetual drip of regret. Some of us, y'all, we got that regret that nags our soul and our emotions for months, even for years. Some of us, y'all, even though we're still in it, we just keep regretting. Every time we do something, we just keep regretting. We don't quit. We just keep it there. But every time you go there, every time you speak to that person, every time you put that resources into something, it's kind of like a faucet. And I, 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 I got flavor water, but you ever had some just drip, 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 drip? It's, it's like a faucet, always running, always dripping, where it's aggravating. Anybody had a faucet that it wouldn't shut off and it just keep dripping? How aggravated is that? Drip, 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 drip. That is aggravating. And some of us, y'all, we have an aggravation, amen, of regret because we don't quit it. And that's when you know it's time that we quit because every time you do it, every time you go there, every time you put energy into it, drip, 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 drip. And it's all regret. You just keep regretting it. I regret it. I kept loaning that person another dollar. I regret I keep going over that person's house every time they call. I regret I keep answering the phone every time. Y'all, we're talking about when to quit something. Y'all, somebody said I had a dripping hot water tank. So you know what I'm talking about. How, 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 how nerve wracking is that? <laughs> how aggravating is that? Y'all, but some of us, y'all, it's that kind. You ever do something as soon as you get done doing it? Drip drip of regret. And brothers and sisters, that's one of the benefits of, of strategically quitting. We remove that perpetual drip of regret. Of regret. All right, just a couple more, y'all. I'm going to let y'all go for the night because here's what I'm going to do next week. And I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to jump into it tonight because I'm going to give y'all five signs that indicate you need to quit something. Tonight, I'm just giving you the benefits of quitting. Next week, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dive deeper and give you all five, maybe five, six, maybe four or five, five, six, between four and six uh, indications of when you need to, uh, you need five signs that indicates that you need to strategically quit something. All right. Number three, it can boost your leadership. The benefits of quitting something, it can boost your leadership. Follow this. In the eye, it can boost your leadership in the eyes of others. When they see you muster the courage to quit that elephant that most everybody felt should have been gone long ago. Oh, did y'all catch that? I'm going to say it again. It will boost your leadership in the eyes of others. When they see you muster the courage to quit or nick that elephant that most everybody felt should have gone a long time ago. You ever hung around family members? And they've been waiting for you to stop that foolishness. You've been hanging around co-workers. They've just been waiting. It. Amen. And it boosts your leadership. It shows, brothers and sisters, that you have the courage to quit something. When it's the elephant in the room, everybody know it. Everybody can see it. But yet, don't nobody want to say nothing. But you hold on to it. I, I, I hope y'all with me tonight. 
Amen. Hope I'm blessing somebody tonight. Well, I'm blessing myself. I ain't blessing nobody else because there's some things I need to quit. Oh, my God. All right. Let's do another one. Four benefits of strategically quitting something. Four benefits of strategic quitting. Let me just say it like the way, that way. Four benefits of strategic, I did say strategic, quitting. It can develop a key quality great leaders embody. It can develop key qualities that great leaders embody. What do you mean? It's humbling to admit that a project you may have started just doesn't work anymore or never did. And, 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 and almost like it boosts your leadership in the eyes of others, but it also develops that key quality because once you, let me say this correctly, once you quit something, it raises a consciousness that you never want to go back to something that wasn't working. I'm going to say it again. It, 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 it's, that, it's, it's that quality that is, is, is that key quality that great leaders in, embody. Great leaders have this have this quality that I never want to go back to something. I, I never want to go back to, to that hole. I never want to go back to that loser strategy. I never want to go back to feeling that way again. If you ever been something and someone was sucking up your resources, you have that quality to say, I'm not going back to that. Once you walk away from it, once you, yeah, somebody say, preach, cut the cord. Once you cut the cord, thank you. That's good. Once you cut the cord, you never want to be back in that same place again. Are y'all with me? It's kind of like a bad habit. You have any, any ex-smokers? Hey, man, you had weak lungs and or anybody who used to drink all the time. And, you know, you was, you was, you was, what they call it. I don't want to use this term online, but pissy drunk and doing crazy stuff. You never want to go back to that feeling again. And that develops that, 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 that key quality that great leaders have. Great leaders have this quality that once God brings them out of something, once they come out of something, they don't go back. It's not a cycle. It's not a reviving doors. It's not like, you know, when I was little, I used to play, I used to love playing in um, the revolving doors. You go into a hotel, when I used to go to church conventions or go to, back in the day, go to Macy's. Was it Macy's downtown? The Hudson's down, not Macy's then, Hudson's and stuff and J.C. Penney's or K. Marks and they had the revolving doors. I used to love playing in the revolving doors. My mom was like, boy, when you get out the revolving doors, I wasn't going nowhere. I was just going in the circle and the revolving door. And as silly as that sound, some of our lives, y'all, we're just in a revolving door where we never develop the quality, amen, of saying, once I've been, I don't ever want to be in that cycle again. I don't ever want to be going around and around getting nowhere. I don't ever want, I don't ever want to go round and round being in the same place, same cycle, same situation, same distress. Once you come out of that, brothers and sisters, that's one of the benefits of strategically quitting. Now I look at things differently when I'm investing. Now I look at things differently when I'm loaning people money. Now I look at things differently because I never want to be in that place again. It's humbling. It's humbling to admit that a project you started doesn't work and never did, but it develops that quality in you that say, hey, I, next time I'm not going to let it linger that long. Next time I'm not going to let it, I'm not going to be stuck in it that long. And brothers and sisters, that's when we have to know, amen, when it's time to quit. And I close with this and I'm going to pick it up next week. We perceive quitting in a negative light. Well, some of us, all depends on what it is. If it's something at church, you ain't got no problems. You tell everybody, girl, I quit that. <laughs> they thank you, host. They put it on the um, they put it on the screen the four benefits. Amen. I again we see quitting in a negative light, but oftentimes quitting is the first step to us finding a new and better path and ending our perpetual burnout. I'm gonna say it again. Sometimes quitting. It's the first step to us finding a new path and a better path to that continually ending our burnout. Brothers and sisters, here's what I'm going to do. Next week, because I'm not going to start on it tonight, but next week I'm going to give you five, I'm going to give you some signs that indicates you need to strategically 
quit something. I'm just going to tease you tonight. I ain't going to talk about it. You know you need to quit when in your soul you know it needs to go. And I'm going to start there. I'm, I'm going to start there. I'm, I'm going to pick that up next week. Anybody know something way down deep down inside of you? And maybe it might not be that deep. You know it needs to go. Some of y'all need to. The Lord just wanted me to throw that at one of y'all already. Some of y'all went, went in your soul, deep down in your soul, or it might not be that deep. You know it needs to go. I'm closing with that. Because some of us, y'all, I'm, I'm in your Kool-Aid. I'm, I'm in your living room. Some of y'all know in your soul it needs to go. But I'm going to pick that up next week. And I'm going to give you some strategies and some things on next week on when to quit. Again, brothers and sisters, please, please have some discernment with what I'm teaching. You already came in late. Go back and look at it. I'm not talking about quitting on God. Please understand, if God called you to do something, God oftentimes will take you down to the valley before he brings you to the mountain. God oftentimes will have you in a place where you might seem like you're wasting resources, time, and energy, but it's a God thing. All right, y'all go back and look at that. But there's some things, y'all, that's not a God thing. That's a good thing that we need to quit. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, because you're going to help us. We thank you, God, because many of us on this line tonight, we're holding on to something. Oh, God, that's got us tripping. <laughs> many of us holding on to that one thing, two things, three things that got us tripping. Lord, help us to have discernment on when we should strategically quit something. Help us, God, to not just quit because we're lazy, not just quit because somebody, we don't like something, but help us, God, to discern when it's time to walk away. That's very difficult, Lord, because we don't, first thing we never want to do is walk away from our blessing. Second thing, we don't ever just want to give up on you or something you're doing through us. Help us, Lord. Can't do this without you. But with you, we can get through this. With you, God, we can make it. We love you. We praise you. Give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Well, y'all give the Lord a hand of praise wherever you are on tonight. Amen. Hopefully, I made sense out of that on tonight. It's kind of a difficult lesson to teach because, again, I just, I, I want to make sure that you get an understanding. And we'll pick it up on next Tuesday. All right. Thank you all for joining me. Man, I see all the, all the amens. I see them coming across. Thank you all tonight. Amen. Thank you all for that on tonight. Let me give you all a few announcements. Matter of fact, real quickly, those that want to give on tonight, I'm going to put that up real quickly. Those that would like to give, thank God we're not a begging church. We are a giving church. You want to give on tonight. Thank you for your gifts. Thank you for your tithes. Thank you for your offering. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. For being faithful. Amen. To our ministry. You all, our small groups are getting ready to kick off their spring. No, yeah, their spring. Their spring life groups. Brothers and sisters, I only have about 45 minutes and, you know, you, I can't really interact much with you all, but I, small groups are all about interacting. There are no, there are there are judgment-free zones where you can meet with other believers, and they're all online. They're online life groups. All you got to do is have a computer, a phone, a tablet where you can get on Zoom, and you can meet our, our life groups meet, meet our life groups meet once a week. We got about seven to eight groups or something like that that meet once a week. Amen. Almost every night except Sunday and Tuesday. I think we also have a Saturday group. Amen. So you definitely want to sign up. And sign up for our life group. I promise you, you will be blessed. If you can scan the QR code, cool. If not, go to the website. Something on there will say sign up for our life groups. They meet online. Amen. So you can be right at home and you can join our life group. And I definitely want to highly encourage you all to join our life groups that are starting or will be starting up in a week or so. All right, brothers and sisters, on Sunday, we are back. Now, y'all been showing up. Nine's been a great crowd. It never's been packed. Amen. So we're back to two services. We are back. Somebody say we are back. We are back. Back in two services at 9 and 11. And thank you all that joined us on Sunday. We had a great time on Sunday. Oh, it seemed like Sunday was just yesterday. Man, I kid you not. But thank you all. Thank you all that joined us even by streaming on Sundays. All our services are streaming. So if you can't make it, 
Hey man, you can watch both services. You can watch one service, whatever you like. If you're traveling, you can watch us on streaming. All of our services are on streaming. We're back, y'all, at 9 o'clock and 11. All right? Thank you all. We also have phone prayer, conference prayer call on the fourth Saturday. So that's not the next prayer. When is the fourth Saturday? The fourth Saturday is, let me look at my calendar. The fourth Saturday is not this Saturday, but next Saturday, April 27th. April 27th. We'll be back. We'll be, and you can take that number down and put it in your calendar to call in and join us on our prayer conference line on April 27th. All right, y'all. That's basically it. Thank you all for joining me. You all have a great day. We're going to watch some basketball now. And the only time I really get into basketball playoff time because basketball season is so long, like baseball season. But anyway, um, um, Consuela is just coming in. She said, totally forgot today was Tuesday. You can go back and watch it, Miss Connie. It's on there. Pretty good lesson on tonight. And um, thank you all. Oh, somebody say volunteer are needed. Volunteers are needed for children's ministry, first, second, and third Sundays. I tell you what. If you can, children's ministry is every first, second, and third Sunday at 11 o'clock. Sister Courtney needs some volunteers, amen, before she decides when it's time to quit. <laughs> We're going to drain her, amen, and she's going to be like, she's going to quit on us, y'all. She needs some resources. She needs some people. Children's ministry is of God. Let's train our children in the way they should go so when they're old, they will not depart, amen. Um, tell you what. You can call the church office if you'd like to volunteer. You can come on Sunday. We'll walk you over there and introduce you to Courtney, the leaders and stuff. But she needs some good adult volunteers. Amen. Before she decides it's time to quit this. <laughs> Man, all right. Thank you all. Um, Gwen said it happens in prayer. 427. Absolutely. God bless y'all. I love y'all. You all be blessed. I'll see you Sunday. Peace. Have a good week.